Hello everyone and welcome to the new studio. As you can see, I'm now in a new room. Uh, there is a completely new light and uh, the only thing I'm working on right now is the audio. So please let me know in the comments if things are sounding nice. Today we're going to be continuing with our chest uh, right here. Well, where is it? There we go, right there. So we're gonna continue with the chest. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you a couple of things here with the textures that we can do to uh, add a little bit more life and variation to the whole thing. We're gonna be using some uh, masks. And uh, yeah, uh, one more thing before we start with this. Remember that right now, at the time of this recording, our first 3D contest, the Weapons of Legend, is open. If you haven't seen it, make sure to check the video. I'm gonna try to link it right around here so that you can see the instructions, the requirements, and you can participate to, to win a $100 prize. So that's pretty much it guys, let's go. This is what we left off last time and as you remember we added a very basic metal rust thing right here. I don't like it to be honest so I'm gonna eliminate it. And one of the things that I'm looking at is the wood itself. I'm not super fond of this wood that we have right now so I think I'm gonna go a little bit more stylized and one of the cool things about working like procedurally here is that at any point I can go here and just look for wood and replace whatever wood I have with this for instance new wood right here. So this H walnut, is it H walnut? Mm, that one looks interesting, but I'm not sure. Let's try this, wood rough. Is it any different? I'm not really seeing the update. Mm, I mean, they're looking a little bit better, but the problem with this woods right here is that they're not as like, I don't know, realistic. That rotten wood actually looks really nice. Let's try rotten wood. So let's try our rotten wood right here. There we go. That looks a little bit better. However, it's a little bit desaturated. So I'm going to go here to the color. I'm going to go to like our warm, like nice wooden colors. I'm going to make the color a little bit more intense like that. Now, this rotten wood, as you can see, the tiling is very low or very high. So I'm going to probably make it a little bit less intense. Let's try a tiling of two so that we can see a little bit of the detail. And there we go. That should look a little bit better. We can also go to the height information. If you remember, we might have moved it or removed it, actually. There we go. So I'm going to turn the height back on so that we get some of like the damage of the wood. But I always think that height tends to be a little bit too like tuned up. So I'm going to go here to the options and I'm going to bring the height a little bit down, something like a, like a 30% so that we can see it. But again, it's not like on your face, right? Now, uh, one of the ways I like to work on this is I like to turn off all of the other things that I'm not working on right now. So all of these metals, we can just turn them off so that we can only focus on the wood. And the one thing I wanna add is a little bit of crunch on the underside of the wood. So I'm gonna go back to my base color. I'm gonna add a new layer. And on this new layer on the base color is gonna be just like a basic, like sort of like dark red color. A little bit more, maybe to the greens like a desaturated green, kind of like a, like a rust or something. And I'm gonna add a black mask. Oh, right click and black mask, there we go. So now, if we go to the brushes, we have a lot of brushes here inside of Substance that we can use to generate some very nice textures, like this one's right here. Kyle Real Watercolor, that one's pretty cool. We got this uh, Kyle's Real Splatter. Like all of this look very nice. I, I kind of like this one right here, Dampy dampy effect and what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna start painting some of this effect down here on the wood of the object and then i'm gonna press x i just pressed x right there to invert so that we can fade out some of those elements now this one's i definitely want to make it rougher so i'm gonna increase the roughness so that it's not as shiny and i'm gonna go to the properties i'm gonna make this into overlay um i've been thinking about doing this video for a while so let me know in the comments if this should be something that we should have here in the channel i want to do an explanation of what all of the different things do here in setup substance so yeah let me know what you think so that one looks pretty nice. I, I like the, the general effect right there, which is looking quite, quite nice. And then uh, now I'm just gonna continue adding a little bit more detail right here. So this is symmetrical, that's fine. We can break symmetry actually. I, I kinda wanna have this a little bit asymmetrical. And I'm gonna show you, this is a little bit of an advanced trick. So if you're watching this and you like this following trick that I'm gonna show you, I would really appreciate it if you leave us a follow or a like or a subscribe or something. Because, um, yeah, I'm trying to share as many tips as I can. Sometimes I forget about sharing specific things. But this one, I think, is going to be really, really neat. Now, on the top part, I don't want to add too much. But I do want to add a little bit of, you know, just like a random damage in certain areas. 
just random dirt. Usually, you need to think, whenever you're, you're thinking about texturing an object, you need to think what parts of the object are people going to be, like, working or, or manipulating more. And things close to the, I would imagine someone, like, holding onto the chest, right? And, uh, and placing their dirty hands on top of it. So, I would expect to see a little bit more dirt on this upper part. So, there we go. Now, here's the trick, or here's the little secret, the little, like, um, yeah, secret uh, technique. One of the cool things is that we have this very cool... Um, element we have the h walnut thing and i would like to extract the height information from this thing so i'm going to right click and i'm going to add an anchor point and the anchor point is going to be grabbing the information from this specific layer now if i go to this one right here i can add a, a fill layer and i can use a height information or an anchor point there we go from the walnut and what this can do is I can reference the height information from the object. Let's go to M or to C to go to the mask so that we can actually see what's going on. And as you can see, the mask right here, look at this, this fill layer that we just added right here, this mask is the, the height information from the wood material. What I can do here is I can add a levels. And if I just like, like play with the levels, as you can see, we can make this very, very, very grungy. Okay. And then what I can do, this is the secret secret element, I can multiply this against the orig original paint that I did here on the, on the main layer. Ideally, I would have needed to do this in a, in, a, in a paint layer by itself. But now you can see how this fill layer is multiplying and only on the areas where I see this thing am I getting the damage, okay? So how can we make this a little bit more intense? We can go to the levels and invert this. So now if we invert this, you can see that this thing is giving me the dirt everywhere except where I want to have the effect. So let's actually invert this right here. There we go. And you can see how by playing with these two layers, we can generate a really, really, really interesting effect. Let's crunch this a little bit more. Let's try instead of multiply, let's try divide. And let's invert. Is that closer to what we want? I'm not sure it's doing exactly what I want. We can also try an overlay. We're just going to multiply things a little bit different. And let's invert this again. There we go. So now by doing the overlay, as you can see, we can use this levels and this fill to blend or to kind of like get these things out of certain parts of the element. And this is going to give me a way more interesting effect on the whole thing. Okay. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's one very cool trick that we can use right there. Now let's of course go back to the metals. And uh, since we're going to be having this like a dirt layer on top of everything, I actually want to like bring the overlay down a little bit. Just not too much. There we go. I'm going to copy this layer, Control c and paste it inside of the metals. Let's get rid of this elements right here and add a new black mask. And I'm going to use this black mask to paint a little bit of the dirt on the underside as well. Because usually when you see dirt on one specific area, you're going to see dirt on all of the different places. So you definitely want to add a little bit of this. Now this one, since it's supposed to be on top of the metals, I probably want to keep the overlay all the way up so that we can actually see it. And again, that's going to give us a really, really interesting effect. Careful with overlay when you're uh, doing it on top of an object that has color, like this gold color, because as you can see, we get this sort of like a red tint, kind of like rust. It might look good in certain instances, but if you don't want that, you might want to try something like a multiply instead. Multiply will not blend the colors as much. So it's... Uh, a slight different change right there that we can use there we go that's looking a little bit better i do feel like the metal is a little bit too um i don't know light we definitely need to crunch it up a little bit more so i'm gonna go to the metal grinded here and i'm gonna go to the color and i'm gonna bring the color down a little bit to more like a dark color and i'm gonna bring the roughness up as well a little bit because now what i want to do is here instead of the metal colors i'm going to add a new layer this is going to be a metal layer. So on the metal values, I'm going to bring them all the way up. Add a black mask, and we're going to add a generator. And it's going to be our typical metal edgeware. There we go. The one thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go back to the object here. And on the height information, we can bring the height information down. So it looks like we're actually carving in into the metal. Not too much. Like 0.02 should be more than enough. 
And uh, then, of course, I usually like to keep this in linear dodge so that we can, like, multiply the colors. And I'm going to use the trick that I showed you in the last video, which was using a field layer with, like, a procedural clouds noise, like this one right here. Let's increase the tiling a little bit and the contrast, definitely. And we're going to multiply it so that we don't get the exact, like, detail everywhere. Remember, you can at any point go to your mask option with the letter C. And here we should be able to see what the mask is doing. There we go. Look at that. Oof. Beautiful, beautiful metal edge we're right there. So now we get this very nice, like, uh, damage on top of the whole thing. I want to go back to the wood. Here's another trick that we can do. I'm going to add a, a, like, basic layer. And it's going to be, like, a, like a nice dry wood color. So something like this. Very rough. And I'm going to add a black mask. And this black mask is going to have a fill layer. And it's going to be a scratches. There's a very cool scratch generator that we have here inside of Substance, this Grunge Scratch. And look at that. We get scratches all over the place. And what we can do is we can, again, go to the material, go to the height information, and push the height information in. And now it looks like we've carved then a lot of detail into the wood. Look at that. I would usually, again, place this into a linear dodge so the colors are, like, multiplied and, like, exaggerated a little bit more. And doesn't that look amazing? Very, very, very cool. That's gonna give the the whole chest a lot of uh, a lot of like personality. Now I definitely want to add a, a little bit of rust. So let's go to our element right here. I'm gonna go for my rust information right here, and let's add this on the very top. Add a black mask. Add a layer. So the sorry, add the generator, and we're gonna add, of course, our dirt generator just gonna hit the whole thing this one i usually said to multiply because again it's gonna darken the whole thing it's gonna make it very grungy as you can see right here but it's gonna give us a very very nice effect look at the difference that we have from this very like plain easy chest to this one right here very i, I know this very contrasting a little bit stylized or cartoonish you might say but I, I feel like this one looks very or makes it look very very nice now, I want to try something that uh, I recently saw about the wood. I want to change the hue of the wood a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way down here to the wood. I'm going to add a new fill layer. And in this fill layer, this is only going to be a color layer. I'm going to add a sort of like, like brownish hue right here. And I'm going to add a black mask. There was a filter that I recently saw, where, which was a... Color match, color correct, color balance. Let, let me very quickly check which one it was. It's an, a very easy one. Okay, we're gonna add a black mask on this one and we're gonna right click and we're gonna add a generator and it's called a UV random generator. It's this one right here. So what this one does is it will randomly give a different color, as you can see, to each specific UV island. And since each of this like wooden planks that we created were um, a specific uh, UVs, they have their own specific UV. As you can see right here, we're gonna get a, a very, very nice effect. Now what we can do here is we can again like overlay this and look at that like we do random and each little plank changes a slightly like changes color slightly which i believe gives us a very very nice effect overall to this chest now one last thing i want to do before we we call this textures done i know this is again very grungy it all depends on the style that you want to go for if you want to go for a clean chest uh you can use the same techniques that i just showed you just keep things a little bit less intense but in this case i, I really like how this is looking kind of looks like my uh, my dnd barrels that i have on my um on my games so the last thing i want to add is just a little bit of light because i do feel like things are getting a little bit too dark so i'm going to go to the very top i'm going to add a fill layer it's going to be pure white Actually, I'm gonna go to like a like a nice uh, warm light yellow like this. I'm gonna add a black mask, and I'm gonna add a f a generator, and this is gonna be a light generator. And what the light generator does is we can point this so that it hits the upper parts of the element. We can play with the glossiness. We can play with the highlight level. I'm gonna keep a very low highlight level. A little bit more attenuation so that we're only getting most of it on the top part right here. And then we're gonna linear dodge this as well and lower this quite a bit. So as you can see, this adds a, a little bit of a, of a dust layer of, uh, 
of um yeah light layer on top of the whole thing and i feel it just like helps unify the whole element together so that's pretty much it man for or dudes or guys for this uh for this thing for this uh part of the process um i'm gonna bring this into maya and do a quick render for a thumbnail but i just want to stop right now and take a moment to remind you that two things we have a course where we cover all of the steps way more in depth about how to create proper pbr textures for games it's called triple a weapons for um production it's a, it's a blender course it's very very cool you can check it down in the description down here and you can use that information and this information that we're seeing right now to use it for the contest it's going to be active until october the 12th and um i believe that's it guys thank you very much again for your support please let me know in the comments if you like the contents so far we're pretty much done with texturing section so next time we come back to this chest we're going to be talking about rigging and we're going to be talking about bringing this into unreal to prepare it for the final process so yeah that's pretty much it my friends thank you very much and i'll see you back on the next one Bye bye